How's it going, all you happy lost souls? Um, just uh, just a little chill conversation. Um, a little artwork uh, in the background running there on the on the screen, but I just um, I think it's crazy for one that um, all the life, or at least it was the first death that inspired all of life's creation and um, what I mean by that is that it's my belief that life started in this universe um, as we know it uh, probably the earliest two billion years ago and the reason I say this is Well, it's kind of ignorant because uh, this argument's only based in the most recent relevant evidence. I believe all life as we know it started with the kingdom, the fungus, even uh, humans and plants and um, biological organisms um, have all branched uh, evolutionarily off of the uh, fungus genome and um, have branched out and formed other kingdoms so it is accurate to say yes we are ancestors our most ancient ancestors are fungi colonies and um, what I find fascinating is uh, the concept of civilization um, from the perspective of the human experience right the period when we were humble hominids and then uh, the earliest um, simple stone tool um, creators um, advancing to composite tool creators to fire makers to you know, ship builders and down the road the creators of civilization in this you know Attican notion or Sumerian Mesopotamian cradle um, Ur and um, um, Akkar and cities uh, such as that and, um, that really handed down and formed this notion of colonization and special specialization and civilization and the expansion and success of the species then dependent on the colony's health. Um, essentially, it's this uh, macrocosm, if we want to shrink back and reflect it to a microcosm, exactly how a colony of mycelium take over. And then eventually, when the colony is um, dying and needs to reproduce uh, these different um, genetic um, uh, GLI come out of the spores um, when it's in contact with whatever that particular fungus species eats. Um, this is uh, especially true for mushrooms more than um, m more than other things like molds and um, uh, bacteria and things like that. But um, anyway, at this point. Um, this ball becomes snow white and once uh, you know say we'll talk about um, a psychedelic mushroom like a uh, psilocybin cubescent or um, uh, the liberty caps um, that are famous in the UK um, these uh, medicines these ancient medicines um, used for a long time alongside with you know things like cannabis uh, you know, and, and all these things brought our ancient ancestors closer to the gods. These were keys that opened doors. And that's um, what we have to understand. And um, some things are more recreational than other. You know, you can wind down and, uh, you know, chill out with, uh, you know, some cannabis at the end of the day and, and use it for pain and uh, anti-anxiety and, and for sleep and and also for, you know, a better metabolism and um, maybe a overall life uh, 
you know, overall increase of, of a well-being and a, a better life in, in general. Um, other people might not like cannabis and choose not to do it, and so what. But if we go down this psychedelic branch and you intensify those experiences all the way up the ladder to something like DMT, that is literally the key that opens the door to this place that I call the omnipresent, where time um, becomes true uh, and the illusion of the human experience becomes wiped away where our time is linear because there is a finite amount of it. We are born and we die, so we keep track of things. Um, I've had this argument before. If you never died and you could never die, you were immortal and vulnerable to everything, and time was completely not an issue, then you could go anywhere you wanted because it didn't matter how fast you went. You'd always get there because you live forever, right? Um, I digress. The point being is time is only linear in our perspective. True being is everything always was, everything always wasn't, and everything always isn't, and everything always is. You go back to like Schrodinger's cat, you know, every indecision, every true indecision where you made a significant decision, like should I go straight or make a left when I go home, that just created another you, another universe um, that exists forever. Uh, this harkens back to something that's much deeper, this thread. If all life came from the first spore out of some flagella floating in some stagnant pool of water from some de debris floating on some comet or asteroid-based system far off in space after the Big Bang created everything, let's just say life came out of one of these stagnant pools and a spore floated off into space like a miniature microscopic space capsule and it floated on for as long as it took because time was irrelevant because until this thing landed on something that it could colonize it did not awaken and when it did it awakened and created life and organization and possibly DNA, and possibly perception. Could all of what we know and know just be a dream within a dream? If you've ever experienced DMT, the connection to this omnipresence, the truth that you never died because energy is not created, not destroyed, but forever, human mind just has amnesia that key unlocks all your past lives and all your future ones and uh, all your present ones and uh, it's very very awfully hard to describe that experience unless you've actually done it so I'm going to stop with that but it comes back to my true belief that life probably started from these super tiny microscopic little space capsules known as spores and these spores floated off and didn't matter how long it took millions of them floated off and eventually they landed some of them got lucky and some of them took hold the fortune or the future <laughs> or fortune favors the bold and, and the point being is humans are trailblazers um, they're inventors, explorers um, they're people that want to expand their horizons and um, once upon a time, the oceans were uh, the biggest boundary to that uh, expansion. And then we conquered that and we branched out to all the continents and um, started to colonize. Uh, now um, it's come time that we figure out that the ocean is now outer space and that's our next boundary. And we need to become interplanetary and we need to start colonizing our galaxy. 
we need to do this way quicker than we have been and if we could all collectively organize instead of accumulating wealth and withholding it why can't we all work together to improve our chances our future chances as a species we've only been around uh, generously even in a semblance of us maybe a couple million years the hominid that eventually became us you know maybe 500,000 years ago the first modern us or you know possibly older if we find older evidence but the dinosaurs were around for like <laughs> way longer millions of years before a one day it just all ended for them my point is they were way more successful than we've proven to be and yet we're all sitting and resting on our laurels a comet a super volcano a shifting of the um, magnetic poles you know tsunamis um, war uh, disease famine point being just uh, for the sense of the human spirit for the purpose of wanting to actually wake up and have a purpose instead of just, uh, pardon my language, fucking, procreating, continuing our species. Now we need to bear fruit. And we need to shoot off our spores into that great unknown. And we need to get lucky and start colonizing other planets. Folks, we cannot be afraid of this boundary, this barrier because it's not a boundary or a barrier. It's simply the next substrate, the next road, and we just have to create the means to travel on it efficiently and effectively and confidently. And we need to stop thinking that this is some far off notion and we need to realize we need to get involved in this sooner than later. Do you want the human story to be successful? Because it won't be if it stays confined to this little floating piece of dust in the sea of tar that is endlessly expanding, cloning, doubling, multiplying forever. Not only your individual decisions create endless universes and your indecisions create endless parallel universes, so does everyone else's, and so does every thing in existence. It's just another thread in the program. It's really, really amazing, but the truth is, all perception, all of existence, all of reality is a dream. And it was probably created by DMT or a chemical similar to it. Everything in existence that communicates, even our cellular systems, our genetic coding, our DNA, it all communicates with shapes, with pre-programmed information in the nuclei of the cell that tells that cell what to do, when to do it, how long to do it. What we don't know is who programmed it because the way I see things, everything that we understand that runs and operates with function and intelligence that we have created was created by us. Then we must apply that same logic. What advanced God-like entity, if you want to call it, what crazy advanced creator made DNA and programmed us because it's time to really really start accepting that we are simply software running on an advanced program on a substrate that we cannot see Anyways, all you happy lost souls, don't think too hard. Just smoke some tree or do whatever you got to do. Wind down. Love your friends. Stay safe. Make some friends. 
make some new ones, lose some old ones, find new circles, do whatever you got to do, stay happy, stay optimistic about the future. And please, to all the explorers and trailblazers, look up.